As conflict within Europe began to foment, and a Second World War loomed on the horizon, the top brass at the Regia Aeronautica, the Italian Royal Air Force, realized that their air fleet was outdated in contrast to aircraft available to the other European powers. But rather than develop an air force that could be truly reckoned with, it seemed as if Italian dictator Benito Mussolini was more concerned about keeping up appearances. Mussolini wanted world records in Italian colors. Thus, the Italian air marshal contacted famous Italian engineer Filippo Zapata to return from his life and work in France and begin work on a new series of aircraft, with an emphasis on setting new endurance and distance records for the purpose of Italian propaganda. One of Zapata's first new models, the Cant Z501 Gabbiano, was a single-engine-powered flying boat capable of going distances no aircraft of its time had seen before. Its first flight was completed on February 7, 1934, and it certainly checked Mussolini's boxes. It was bizarre in appearance, but got the headlines he desired. But when it came to actual combat, it quickly became apparent that functionality was overlooked. The Kent Z-501 should have probably been considered obsolete by the start of World War II. No matter, though. Slow, lightly armed, and made of wood, the Italians had no choice but to ride the Kent Z-501 into naval combat. The results were predictable. Nicknamed the Gabbiano, or Seagull, the plane ended up being more of a sitting duck against Allied fighters. Italian pilots themselves called the Kant Z501 Mamma Yuto, or Mother Help Me. The plane did surprisingly find a useful purpose, however, as a rescue and reconnaissance aircraft. It's even rumored that either thanks to its renowned endurance capabilities or its incredibly slow speed, it may have caused at least one Allied fighter to run out of fuel or stall and crash into the sea. Design and Development Filippo Zapata was born in 1894 and became one of the Republic of Italy's foremost aircraft designers. After working for Cantiere Arnotici in the Valley Triestini, or Cant, Zapata moved to France in 1927 to work for the French aircraft company Blériot. By 1931, several of Italy's military aircraft had become too old and worn out to perform well in battle. Thus, Marshal of the Royal Italian Air Force, Italo Balbo, traveled to France to convince Zapata to return to Italy offering him the position of chief designer at Cantieri Riuniti dell'Adriatico, a manufacturer in the sea and air industry. The idea was for Zapata to begin work on a series of new aircraft. Zapata agreed, and the famous engineer designed a series of highly successful multi-engined hydroplanes throughout the 1930s. Alongside test pilot Mario Stepani, Zapata's new designs flew 15 first flights and set over 40 world aeronautical records. The first of these designs was the CRDA Cant Z501, designed to replace the Air Force's aging Savoia Marchetti S78 series. Nicknamed Gabbiano, or Seagull, the aircraft was a long-range reconnaissance flying boat bomber that resembled the American consolidated PBY Catalina series, one of the most successful amphibious seaplanes of World War II. The Z501 Gabbiano was made of wood, with fabric covering its upper hull, wing, and tail surfaces. This aerodynamic low-drag design and materials were typical of Zapata. The aircraft also had a very slim fuselage, with a large wing assembly mounted on struts above and away from the fuselage and featuring a boat-like hull. Mounted on the wing structure, the Gabbiano's power plant was a 900-horsepower Isata Fushini Aso 11 engine, driving a two-blade wooden or a three-blade metal propeller, depending on the model. A crew of four or five operated the different posts, which included a bow gun position and the aircraft's engine nacelle was extended aft to fit a cockpit for the flight engineer, who operated a 7.7mm Breda Staffet machine gun. Other similar guns were mounted in the center fuselage and nose. In addition, the machine guns were supplemented by up to four 350-pound bombs positioned under the wings. The prototype of the Z501 flew for the first time in 1934 by Mario Stepani. Production then began a year later, with a requisition for 24 aircraft from Kant and 30 from Aeronautica Sicula, another company located in Palermo. Record-breaking Seagull Although the Gabbiano had an endurance of 12 hours, a modified record-breaking version of the flying boat greatly exceeded that number. As a request from Mussolini, Stepani flew a Z-501 in May of 1934 to try to break the United States seaplane distance endurance record of 2,400 miles. The Gabbiano, fitted with a unique metal three-blade propeller and several other modifications, successfully established a new seaplane distance record of 2,570 miles by flying from Monfalcone to Masawa in Eritrea in 26 hours and 35 minutes. However, when the Italians lost the record to a French aircraft that raised the mileage milestone to 2,694 a month later, 
Mussolini quickly ordered another flight. Italy would reclaim the record for the world's longest seaplane distance on July 16th, flying 3,060 miles from Manfalcone to Berbera, Somaliland in 25 hours. Red Flags Although the Z501 was pleasant to fly and performed above expectations for a one-engine vehicle, the aircraft's wooden fuselage had a mixed reputation and durability problems, especially those produced during World War II. Meanwhile, the Gabbiano's seafaring qualities were quite lacking when compared to other seaplanes of the time, and the aircraft was highly susceptible to less than optimal weather conditions. Many fuselages broke up in rough seas. The aircraft's engine nacelle also provided several hazards, as the propeller would crash down into the cockpit if the Gabbiano landed too heavily. Military Service By the time Italy joined World War II on June 10, 1940, its 15 squadrons had 202 Gabbianos in their service. These models had undergone several modifications from the original prototype, including turrets for the machine guns, an airframe reinforcement that made the aircraft 1,100 pounds heavier. Although this version was fitted with a more powerful Isata Fraschini Asso XLRC engine, the added horsepower was still not able to improve its overall performance. With its maximum speed dropping to 152 miles per hour, its cruise speed to 120 miles per hour, and its range to 1,500 miles, these numbers were worse than the record-breaking vehicle. The Gabbiano was eventually used for search and rescue missions, and also performed anti-submarine patrols, most of them in the Mediterranean theater. The aircraft was preferred in its reconnaissance role due to its long endurance, but it was also highly vulnerable to enemy fighters and even bombers. During the short-lived Italian invasion of France in June of 1940, several Z501s were destroyed when a French sortie attacked the Italian Sardinia base, and another crashed during an accident the following day. In July, Several encounters with the Royal Navy's fleet air arm fighters claimed 11 operational Z501s, dropping the number of useful aircraft to 77. Although the Z501 operated in all theaters of the war, the aircraft was more often than not regulated to second-line duties because of its vulnerability. And by the end of 1941, 15 of the 27 squadrons dedicated to naval reconnaissance had their own Gabbianos. Due to the low number of operational models after the attacks, Italy ordered more to Aeronautica Sicula. During the second round of production, the aircraft was modified, including the removal of the Noah's machine gun, which was replaced by an enclosed fairing. The lot was ready by early 1942. The new batch of Gabbianos collaborated with several Italian vessels to destroy HMS Union, a British U-class submarine, and damage three more submarines. However, the aircraft's effectiveness was extremely limited by its capacity for only four 110-pound bombs, or two 325-pound ones. More missions. During the Spanish Civil War in the late 1930s, the Z501 served with the Nationalists. Then, by the time World War II ended, the Gabbiano continued serving in a reconnaissance role, despite its wooden fuselage looking visibly out of fashion compared to other aircraft of the era. Following Italy's surrender in September of 1943, some of the flying boats extended their operations, with the Axis Aeronautica Nazionale Repubblicana and the Allied Italian Co Belligerent Air Force later on. In 1941, 12 Gabbiano aircraft were exported to the Romanian Air Force, and one of these flying boats was lost after being shot down by legendary Soviet ace pilot Grigory Rechkolov in the autumn of 1943. Still, the Z-501 performed well in the Black Sea, and a single unit managed to sink two Soviet submarines in August of 1941. After the armistice, some of the remaining aircraft were sent to southern Italy, and by October of 1943, the region had 16 operational Gabbianos at their service. All of them were scrapped by 1950. Limited success. A total of 454 Z-501 Gabbianos were built, leaving only 12 incomplete aircraft that were captured during the invasion of Sicily in the summer of 1943. During wartime, aircraft production was accelerated and several models were sent off to the front lines in less than stellar operating conditions. Overall, the Z-501's most significant disadvantage out of its otherwise successful operating record was its wooden fuselage, which was prone to break up in the ocean at any given time. In reality, the Z-501 fared better as an aircraft than it did in its maritime role. And despite breaking several world records throughout its production run, the Z-501 was never considered a top-notch aircraft, finishing the war without a single air-to-air -air lethal hit. Thank you for watching our Dark Skies video. Please let us know your thoughts about this Italian aircraft in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels.